Um, thanks, for, thanks for staying around. Um, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Gottfried. So, I want, so this is the work um, of, of myself and my student, Incy Arkeo. And we both kind of came at this problem with different motivations. So I want to first tell you my motivation for it. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you Insiok's motivation for it, because I think you'll appreciate it more then. Um, about a year ago, Gottfried and I started working on a problem where we were examining clapping patterns. And we, were list we, we examined seven performances of one of Steve Reich's pieces where people clap and they, and they fit. And, and we started asking questions about those performances, much like what, what, we were, what the questions you were asking this morning. You know, what's, what is, how steady is steady in a performance? What's the standard deviation? Um, when, when one person claps, how steadily do they clap? How, how, how repeatable is the timbre of their clap? What's the variation in, in, in all of these things? And we asked a lot of questions like that. We, we, it's, we called it expressive timing in, the, in this, these, these performances of Steve Reich. And I started thinking, and I sort of became a little bit obsessed with thinking about, okay, expressive timing, this is a really cool idea. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna apply this in other, in, in other places. And one of the places that, okay, don't worry, I'm not gonna do any more beat tracking, okay? <laughs> we're, we're, we're done with beat tracking for, for, for the moment. And, and, and as, um, as George said the other day, what happens when beat trackers try to apply to things that sort of don't have a pulse, to beatless music? Well, w I didn't start looking at beatless music. I started looking at, at the rhythms of speech. And here's a place where beat trackers fail. I think, and they fail for a very good reason. There isn't a pulse there to find. And so I, so I wanted to explore the, these rhythms of speech, but my tool for investigating them had departed. And so I wasn't sure what to do, and I, and I sort of floundered. In, in, in my mind, it was something like this. Imagine that you had a whole bunch of different performances of uh, you know, Hamlet's soliloquy. To beat or not to beat, that is the question. Where there is nobler in the mind, et cetera, et cetera. And you, know, and you have several different performances. You have Richard Burton you know, with his deep, dramatic voice, and you have maybe some geeky little high school guy doing the play for his friends. And can you, can you correlate the, 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 the timing that these, the, of these people making the speech with some sort of emotional effect, with some sort of sentiment analysis? Can, can, what can you learn about the about the, the, the people or the way they're speaking and the effect of the speech from the rhythm of what they're doing. And so this was complicated and I didn't see what to do until we found this database. So let me show you what the database, the Speech Accent Archive. Um, let me uh, show you what, what we're talking about here. So here is... Please call Stella. Whoops. Ask her to bring you the things the 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 store. store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. We also need a small plastic snake and a big toy frog for the kids. She can scoop these things into three red bags and we will go meet her Wednesday at the train station. Okay, hundreds of people have logged onto this website and read this paragraph. And these people come from everywhere. There, there's hundreds from, from the United States. There's a, a large group from Australia. I think this is uh, hosted by an, an, an Australian group. Um, there, there's lots from, from, there's a whole bunch of Koreans. There's a whole bunch of uh, all, people from all over Europe. And everybody speaks it with, with their own, uh, own way of speaking, with their own accent. And so this, this, this suddenly became, this, we could see what we needed to do now. Suppose we could line up all of these performances. Then we'd have a database where we could talk about how people vary their speech, how the, how the micro timing of the speech, the expressive performance of the speech works. So, of course, the fundamental problem is they're not lined up, right? I mean. You, you just heard the woman speak. Here's, here's a guy from Paducah, Please Kentucky. Please call Stella. Asked her to bring these things with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese. And you can see that if you try to line these two things up, 
and a big toy frog we for also the kids. Need a small she plastic can scoop snake these things into three red bags and we'll go meet her Wednesday at the train station. Okay. She can I, I mean, I mean, I mean, clearly it's not that they're not. These people did not align their speeches for us. And so, so you can see what we're going to need to do here. What we're going to need to do is, well, in one one sense, we need to squish the guy's speech. I mean, I mean he was talking a whole lot slower than the girl. And, and so we need to squish it. But even if you squished it, I mean, that's not going to be enough because the, 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 the micro timing of, of these speeches is quite different. So our goal now, and I think you can see what this is going to be, our goal, and now I'll play you one of the results of this, is to line up. So here's uh, the, the woman. Uh, as our, is our reference, and we line up the guy from the Please call Stella. Stella. Ask her to bring these things with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. We also need a small plastic snake and a big toy frog for the kids. She can scoop these things into three red bags, and we'll go meet her Wednesday at the train station. So you see it's not perfect. There's places where they, you know, get off from each other. But I think overall, we've succeeded in aligning many of the most important uh, aspects of the speech. So, so what, I want, what, what I want to do with my time here is I'll tell you a little bit about how we did this. Um, it's conceptually fairly easy. We, the details became overwhelming at one point. Um, and then I want to tell you what we plan to do with it. And, and we're at that stage because NCR, in fact, had just, just finished his uh, thesis proposal uh, defense of just when Gottfried emailed and asked me if I would come here, and this was right on my mind. And so I thought, what a, gr what a great opportunity to get some feedback from people because I, you know, I sort of feel a little vulnerable here. I've never done any work in speech. I know there's gobs and gobs of work in speech all over the place, and so I would be very happy for feedback about things that we might be doing wrong or, or ideas that you have that we could, we could do a little more. Um, okay, so here, here was our basic system. And you see the elements are all pretty familiar to you. Uh, well, maybe, it depends on what you know. Um, the heart of the system is, is a, a dynamic time warping, which is a, a well-known algorithm for, well, doing time alignment kinds of things. And then there's, the, there's a few questions about the dynamic time warping. You need to, it, it operates using essentially a distance function. And so you have to choose what distance function you're going to use. There's a handful of standard ones that people, people tend to use. And you have to decide what you're going to feed into it. Now, if you try to feed audio into it, it doesn't do anything good. I mean, it's just not set up somehow to line these things up in the way that you wish they would. If, however, you feed into them uh, basically something that is essentially like a spectrogram, um, and then you extract certain things out of the spectrogram, then you might be a little better off. And so some of the decisions we had to make in trying to build this system were, how exactly are we going to do the spectrogram? What are we going to call the features that we feed into the dynamic time orbit? Um, the other part is the sort of synthesis piece. Now, uh, I think originally when we, when we, when we thought about this, we, we, we came up with some, some ideas for doing the synthesis section in unique ways that correspond to the way we're extracting the, the voices. Um, the committee that, that was, was at, at NCOC's thesis defense thought that was a minor thing compared to the actual time alignment. So we've, we've since just dropped back to using the two standard methods of, of doing time stretching, time compression, which would be an overlap add method. That's all the sound examples I'm playing for you today are done by a fairly simple overlap add. Um, we've also done them with phase vocoders. Each of them has certain kinds of uh, uh, problems that, that they, they in induce when you listen to the, you know, the overlap ad has these occasional little burbly places that where something's gone wrong in the, in, the, in the overlap ad method itself. The phase vocoder ha is smoother, but has a tendency to have these sort of swooshy kinds of phasey kinds of problems. I'm going to ignore those. I, I, I want to say for, 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 for our purposes, in terms of speech alignment, that's a detail. Um, okay, so this is, the, this is the basic procedure. Now, when we first started doing this, 
Um, well, we first w went ahead and just did stuff. And then we started looking at the literature. And so here's the, the papers that we found where people do s this or similar kinds of things. And the, the applications you can see over in the, the scenario line there. Um, you, you'll see some of, the, some of the methods that people use, some of the features they extracted, um, some of the window lengths they use, the, the distance functions used inside the DTW. And um, so we tried a few of these after we'd, after we'd found them. And, and they weren't actually, most of them weren't at working any better on, on our, our database than, than our initial pilot system that we'd built. And we sort of started wondering, well, well what's going on? Um, so, so we have these bunch of parameters that, that we, we can play with, but how do we, how do we go about making, making the choices? So uh, this just lists some of the, some of the details of, of, uh, that we thought to consider. Um, but, but we did notice something about the kinds of failures that our, our system and, and some of the others were making. And they the, 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 the real failures that, that that, that caused things to, to go south were that, you, you know, a word would get off and misaligned, and then it would misalign the whole rest of the thing. And that's really bad, right? I mean, that's going to destroy in any kind of research use of this, you know, database of, of accent things if, if some significant percentage of them just have garbage for, for a large part of the alignment. And so where were these things happening? These things were happening, at, at, interestingly, at the starts of words. Right? I mean, the very most important thing, and I suppose this makes sense, the very most important parts of the word are sort of, I'll call it the attack. You know, the, 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 the P's and the K's and the T's and the B's, not the A, E, O kinds of things. And, and, and so why is this? Well, you've, you've got these windows and you're partitioning through the, through the waveform with your spectrogram windows. And these very fast sounds, these very ones that we're kind of occasionally missing, occupy just a small part of the whole window. That seems kind of silly. Why is the most important part of the speech in terms of the alignment relegated to a small part of the window? Well, you might think, well, let's just make the window shorter. But then sort of all hell breaks loose and everything else goes south if you just make all the windows shorter. So let's, it's time for an idea. And so here's what we decided we'd like to try to do. Suppose we go through and draw, draw the spectrogram. And now we go through the spectrogram and we look for those places where we think we might have trouble. We look for the, the, the sort of the, well, we thought of them as voiced and unvoiced sounds, the, the places where, where you have percussive vocal sounds versus the sustained vocal sounds. Um, the, the proper word for this is sonorant and obstruents. Sonorants go through your vocal cord sonorously, I guess, and obstruents obstruct the flow of air coming, coming up through your larynx. And so what we want to, so here was, our, here was the idea. Suppose we go through and we find where the, 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 the consonants occur and where the vowels occur. Where the consonants occur, we'll use lots of small windows. Where the vowels occur, we'll use long windows. So in other words, we'll go through, we'll draw the spectrogram, and then we'll go through and we'll manipulate the data again. We'll draw another spectrogram that's basically this variable window spectrogram. Now it turns out, so okay, so here's some details. We actually, so here's an experiment where we labeled all of the, uh, the sonorant and the obstruent. I, I snitched this from his prelim document where we were using the wrong words. The, one of the linguists in our, in, on the committee corrected us, and so the, the slide hasn't changed yet. But, and you see this, we did, I mean, you look at, that, look at that little green line. It does a pretty darn good job of separating these two classes of things. So what we're going to do now is use this classifier in order to make that decision about the window. And so here's the idea behind the variable length, variable width spectrogram. And in the, in the, uh, in the sonorant portions there in blue, 
or sorry, the other, other way. In the obstruent portions in blue, we used lots of small windows. In the voiced part, we used large windows. And now you have to m move between the two. And that causes you some angst because those windows, if you're not gonna weight things in improperly, it causes you to require asymmetric windows. Engineers have studied asymmetric windows a little bit and nobody likes them because they're complicated. Turns out there's not actually all that much problem. I mean, I, I circled that big thing in red and the difference is, who, I think it, the difference is not very important from what we're trying to do, but what this allows us to do is use very short windows, 7.5 milliseconds, and fairly long windows, 30 milliseconds. So we have to pick some acoustic features. We pick them sensibly. Now let me play you uh, a couple of more examples so that you know what we're really doing here. So here is now an example from the database, and not that atypical. Please call Stella, ask her to bring bring these things with her from the store, six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. We also need a small plastic snake and a big toy frog for the kids. She can scoop these things into three red bags. So I don't know if you noticed, but a really but interesting thing. Ask her to bring bring these things with her from... I mean, that seems like it's gonna be impossible. Well, you know what? Fortunately, not. So here is the time-aligned Korean girl. Please call Stella. Please call Stella. Ask her to bring these things with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five Notice thick slabs right of through, blue cheese. It went right through the brain. It just squished all that stuff back. So this is what's giving us hope that we can, you know, we've actually made some progress on this problem. We can do this kind of thing. Here's another example where I have, I've just taken. Please call Stella. Ask her to bring, bring these seven things people. with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, seven five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. We also need a small plastic snake and a big toy frog for the kids. Okay, plastic snake big toy frog for the kids. So we can line these things up. And I, so, so now what are we gonna do with this? So I think one of, the, one of the scientific questions that we wanna ask is essentially a classification question. So we have a whole bunch of American speakers, we have a whole bunch of Australian speakers, a whole bunch of Indian speakers, a whole bunch of Spanish speakers. Can we do a classification based purely on the rhythm? Is accent rhythm dependent or does it really require the timbral qualities of the, of the voice? I don't know the answer. But I think here we have, I mean, if the classification works reasonably well, then we can say rhythm is a, is a significant feature inside accent detection. On the other hand, if we can't, then maybe rhythm is not a big part of accent. Here's Insiak's uh, motivation for this. His English is not quite as halting as that Korean girl we heard speak a few seconds ago, but it's fairly similar. He envisions an app for his phone where the phone will you know, read him a sentence. He'll speak the sentence into the phone. Now the phone has a native speaker already embedded in it reading that sentence. It aligns the sentences and then shows him how he might m change his speech to be more like that native speaker. Um, and there's some others. We can go back and maybe do Hamlet's soliloquy now a little bit better because we, you know, if we get enough versions of it, I'm sure we can time align them and then we can study that. We can. And so this is what we're, what we're aiming at. So I would be very happy to hear comments or, or thoughts for other things we might do with this. Um, the work is still in an early stage. Um, in terms of actually using it for anything. We've just gotten through and, f and found the, uh, gotten through our database. And uh, so I'll, thank you. Questions? Uh, on the accent correction work, this is work from IBM. 
they've done it for BPOs in India because the BPOs run out of India and uh, they're talking to American customers. Okay. So to correct your accent, they do a speech recognition and then correct your... Uh, okay. Some but recognize that speech, this is a much easier problem than speech recognition. I mean, y you could do this for anything that you have a native speaker speaking, whereas, well... Yeah, okay. when you did the alignment, if you had done it at the syllable level, because the fundamental speech production unit is a syllable, you segment it at the syllable level, and then you do the alignment, you get better alignments. Well, okay, I mean, we were trying, I mean, n no, we did not do that. Um, I, I, I mean, that, that requires, that require, see, see, you'll make mistakes with syllables. I mean, this is the problem with that kind of approach. We wanted to avoid the complexities of a speech recognition system. And, well, but do, finding the syllables is, is uh, complicated. Syllable See, all we're finding is here is the difference between sonorant and, and obstru obstruent. Oh, and that's, okay. a, that's, a, that's an easy distinction to find. That, that, that recognition, you know, on the data set was 90% or something. So, yeah, maybe I'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I'm interested in hearing this. But, but I was trying to avoid doing actual speech recognition or... Yes? Yeah, I was wondering, um, have you tried... Uh, typical process, signal processing things to detect the, the transients. Like, for example, there's a recent work on, on using median filtering and on the spectrum. You mean sort of finding the starts of the words? Yeah, I mean. It, well, the, the, we did look at that and, you know, it's, it, you can, you, a lot of the time you can find the starts of words, yeah. but a lot of times you can't. You can't. And, I mean, if you notice, for instance, in the, in, in the, um, the, the southerner was really easy because he broke his phrases apart by significant silences. Whereas the reference that we used did not. Many of, her, many of the same phrases were sort of blurred together and you know, she was a much more energetic speaker. So the problem with silences is that's part of what we're trying to find, right? I mean, we wanna know the rhythm of the speech. That includes how much silence there is. I was, was not thinking about silence is truly and the, those changes that we're thinking about transients or, or attacks that can be or oh can, well i mean in, in, a, in a way you can think of the 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 obstruent sonorant classification as finding yeah, attacks yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, th yeah I, I mean i mean, I mean so. you're, you're doing that i was wondering if if if, if you have tried other uh, techniques like simple ones like the medium filtering i, I was saying or, or perhaps uh, learning that from sure. I mean, we played, we played around uh, with a bunch uh, of stuff. Dictionary-based uh, representation, for example, using uh, matching pursuit or something like that. Because in in some other works, it worked quite fine. And so, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I'd be interested in some references because, I mean, especially if they're ones we don't know about. Because, yeah. Thank you. It's, it's just a very general question. Uh, in, in terms of speech recognition, I was just wondering how stable any of our accents are, you know, because in conversation we mirror mannerisms and things like that. So, uh, you know, we use speech in lots of different... Co so are they stable, our accents? Uh, I, I, I would say this is maybe something that we could investigate using this tool. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I don't, I don't know the answer. I suspect yes, in the sense that you can hear, you know, when I hear someone speaking in an Australian or a Southern US accent, they're usually speaking, you know, in something that is easy to identify as that. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know, I don't know that there's a database where the same people, it would be interesting to have the same people over time, for instance. I guess you, you, I guess you could investigate that question, but I have no idea how stable accent is. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add something to this question of stable accents, because I come from a part of the world which is you know, hugely multilingual, where we also deal with the politics of language. So you know that you have a colonial language or an ex-colonial language that you speak a certain way, 
And there's a world of difference between reading a text, which you would do in church or, you know, and having a conversation, even in the same language. Uh, because of reading a text implies a certain uh, performance constraint. Right? So for me, accents are hugely unstable. Not, not just the question of, you know, is it stable, is it not stable. They, they, I can't see how they can be stable given all of these um, uh, forces that act on you depending on where you're actually deploying the speech. So that, you didn't ask me the question, but that's, I, I would say that, that accents can't possibly be stable. I mean, I speak differently when I'm trying to be a scholar with, um, you know, here in Abu Dhabi from what I would say. We're discussing bills at home with my wife. I noticed one of your references was uh, Dan Ellis, where yes. you uh, had in parentheses uh, polyphonic music transcription. So how, do you, how did he or how do you see this possibly relating to uh, music analysis? I, um, well, Dan, Dan's done a bunch of work in, in, in various things here. Um, I mean, this, this particular, the, the, the one of his in, in 03 was, was specifically aimed at sentence alignment, but he talked about using the same kind of thing for taking two performances of, you know, say, two, two performances of one piece of music and then doing the, the same kind of alignment on, on the musical, on the music, the, the two audio files. Mm -hmm. So like score following, but with two, two performances rather than a score and a performance. Mm -hmm. um, it, there, there wasn't a lot in the paper, but he did a couple examples, so that was... All right, thank you. Okay.